ones that seem to keep giving us trouble. So make sure that if there's anything that you don't understand about it, you ask me any questions that you have. another word for rule? Yeah, formula. Write a formula for finding any a sub n we want. a sub 10, a sub 27, whatever we want, we just plug that n number into the formula and have that number, whatever that number is supposed to be. Sometimes there's no magic bullet for uh, determining what the rule is. You just kind of give it some thought. Any initial thoughts? Um, that's uh, n squared plus one. Nice. How did you come up with that? Because I um, took just the number of n and um, well, one, one squared is one, plus one is two, two squared is four, uh, five, three, nine, one is ten. Yeah, so number nothing uh, work. Magical, nothing. Like, step by step, you just kind of take a look at it. Figure it out. Yeah, I remember, like, anything that you noticed that kind of made you think you try what you tried? First, I uh, thought it was like you can use the formula, but then, or I just did like n plus. Like, it was like like two n or something. Uh, it didn't work. It so. wasn't getting big, too fast enough. Yeah. Okay. This function function needs to be something to get bigger and faster than that. And oh my God! Like so a one equals two. Yeah. <coughs> A2 equals five. So you just kind of wrote it down like this? Yeah. Sorry, that was two. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Two, and you put this guy like, you just put them right next to each other. Yeah, and then just hold them to you. Yeah. And just, and then just sat back and, and let it wash over you. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the first thing you notice is, uh, like if you start at five, uh, sorry, this would be six. Like that's almost a multiple of five. It's one more than a multiple of five. This is one more than a multiple of four. This is one more than a multiple of three, one more than a multiple of two. It's harder with smaller numbers, but when you got a multiple of five, right, that's clearly. So since they're close, to, but, it, but it's more than multiples of five, right? It's not just like uh, two times five and uh, or two times four, two times three. It's, it's bigger than that. It gets bigger faster than that. You know, like I said, there's, there's not any magic thing that I can tell you, but what you can, uh, you know, try something and notice it's, it's not working. Like, if I try 2n plus 1, that, that's not going to work. 2n plus 1 will always give me an odd number. That's not odd. That's not working. It's, and if I do 2 times 4 plus 1, that's only 9. That's not getting very big very fast. Not fast enough. Okay? So, yeah. Sometimes you just have to write it down like that and then think, how can... Two turn into five in the same way that four turns into seventeen. Try things out. Erase it when it doesn't work. Try something else. Anybody else have any like amazing revelations as they work on the problem? Okay. I see it now. Yeah, I wrote it exactly yeah. like that on my paper, and I couldn't see it at all. But now it's like completely off. Yeah, that's that's the tough thing about some subjects, some topics. There isn't a formula. There isn't a cookie cutter way to just do it. Okay. Um, okay so here's one that we uh, are having trouble with. Just the wording, I think, of the question, mostly recognizing what it's asking for, what the answer is going to look like, at least. Uh, <coughs>
Writing it in summation notation, that is the important thing. What does summation notation mean? Like, sigma, sigma. Sigma. you gotta use that sigma, okay? So the sigma is the, the thing is a real big giveaway that you're using summation notation, right? It means sum. means sum. Sigma starts with S, sum starts with S, that's why we use sigma to represent that we're going to sum F, okay? And then here we put the term that we start on, which left up to us will always start at one is always a good choice, right? So this is a sub one, two, three, and four. And above this for four. Four, because we go from the first to the fourth. We could do something silly and go from the fifth to the sixth and eighth, but who would do that, right? If, if it's up to them, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you just start the first and go to four? And here we put a rule. A rule. What is the rule for this sequence? What kind of sequence? Arithmetic, we're adding something every time. What are we adding? Six. Six, we're adding six. We're going to n minus one, and then always here would be the first one, seven. Seven plus six times n minus one. The beginning number plus the number you're adding times n minus one. You can distribute the six. Okay, so then you got seven minus six is one. Plus six n. Or you can put seven plus six times n minus one right there. That's it. That's summation notation. That's all it's asking for. I'm not asking you to add them up. Calculators can add things up like that. You can really just punch them in. I'm trying to exercise and get used to this new different notation. Questions? Yep. So we get like dots getting sub like N9 or something. Uh, hold on, you're, you're, you're making me think of something. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Um, like if you did, you put n instead of i. Yeah. That would. Yeah. But you get the idea, right? You, and, and if you were to use it, you would know what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Technically, it's wrong, but I'm okay with it. You got the rule. You got the beginning and the ending. You know what it means. So that's fine. Write a rule for the nth term of the arithmetic <coughs> sequence. Very important that I told you it was arithmetic. If I didn't tell you that, that'd be really hard. It would be impossible. You just have to kind of guess. <sighs> what kind of pattern is it? I, I, you can't tell with just two numbers. Even if they were in order, just one number and the next number, still way up in the air. What's the pattern? Could be anything. Okay, so it's arithmetic, which means what? You're adding. You're adding. So knowing the 25th term and the 37th term, what can we figure out from that, those two pieces of information? You could take 327 uh, minus 219 and then divide by how many spaces you have to go with. Great, okay, how many spaces is that? Uh, 11. 11? 12? 12. 12? Just 37 minus 25, right? That's how many steps you have to go? That's nine. That's nine. And that is what we call what? Okay, so we found D, that's great. And now we can use D to do what? To find A sub one, because the formula is A sub N equals A sub one plus N minus one times D. And we take 319 and subtract nine 24 times. 24 times equals three. There's our a sub 1, there's our d, so a sub n equals 3 plus n minus 1 times 9, or 3 plus 9n minus 9, maybe 6 plus 9n. Like that. Okay. Any questions? All right, we've done a few of those, we've done a few times.
problems here. First one I gave you, the first, the second, the third, right, and then it implies that it keeps on going like that forever. The formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. That's for all geometric sequences. You can take 21r is equal to 147. 21r equals 147. 21r equals 147. If you multiply that by r, we'll get 147. So we'll just divide both sides by 21. And r equals 7. Good. You can do the same thing. 3r equals 21. And still get 7. That R, and that one goes right there. How do we find A sub 1? Oh, it's given. That's A sub n equals 3 times 7 to the n minus 1. We got A sub 6 and A sub 9. Now they're doing that. Very similar to the one we did for the arithmetic subvention. So you can take Instead of yeah, instead of subtracting, because yeah. arithmetic is about adding to get to the next term, so here we would, uh, when we're multiplying to get to the next term, we would divide. Okay, what would we do with that? Okay. Well, what's 27. that? Seven. Start with what is it? Twenty-seven. Divide by. Yeah. Take the third that's root. Something. Yeah, we want to take the third root. Oh. Okay. Because it's the result of having multiplied by the same number. Uh, one, two, three times to get to a sub n, uh, a sub nine, a sub six. Here's another way of looking at it: thirty-nine times r, and times r is going to get to a sub seven. Times r again, a sub eight. Oh, so times r again. Yeah, so we're going to multiply by r to the third power equals ten, fifty-three. Divide r cubed equals twenty-seven. Divide by three. Huh? Did you divide by three? Yeah. Writing so yeah. this equation. I know can that. Really too. That's a mistake I made a couple times. But you won't make it on the big important test. Right? No. Okay. This is hard. It just takes a while. Yeah. Get used to it. Um, okay. So now we have R. How are we going to find A sub one? Okay, divide 39 by 3 5 times. Or if you're going to divide by 3 5 times, you can take 39 divided by 3 to the fifth, because we're going to go back five steps. 39 over, right? 1 times 3. Three to the fifth is 2.43. That simplifies it all. 0.16. I rounded it to 0.16. We get a because if we use point one six zero and then we try to get back to thirty nine, we won't get to thirty nine. Get a fraction. Let me show you something. Okay. Let me show you something. Um, there we go. Um, so if I take thirty nine over two forty three, first of all, what I'm about to show you shouldn't be a substitute for something that you should be able to do. We should be able to just find the common factors between these two and yeah, 125. Right, right. What's that? Is it 125? No. It's 125th? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, 39. Like we could just, 39 and 243 have a definitely a 3 in common, right? 13 over 81. 13 over 81. 243 divided by 3 is 81. 81. And 13 is prime. So 13 over 81. That's a simple as that fraction can get. That's as simple as that fraction can get because 13 is definitely not going to show any factors. Well, unless 81 is a factor of 13 or 1, which I don't know. 81 have a factor of 13? No, 81 is a 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Times three. Nope. So it's all 3s. Also, if you take uh, 39 divided by 243, which we have there, and you want to see what that is in the fraction, you press math. Fraction right there. Here, this arrow means convert to a fraction. 13 over 81. Okay. If it's time saving, great. If it's uh, understanding, circumventing, that's bad. 
don't go around the understanding of what, what it takes to get from here to there. But if it saves you some time, if you have to go through all the factors and figure out what it is, and it saves, it saves you time. But don't avoid knowledge. Any questions about either of those? <coughs> Once we know it's geometric, we know that that's the formula for a geometric sequence. And we fill it in, it's fill in the blanks. I think one last one. One last one. Finding the sum. It says it's geometric, so I know it's geometric. How else, if I look at the rule, how can I tell by the rule that it's geometric? It's raised to the i minus 1, I got a number times a number times to the, to the power of i minus 4. It looks geometric. Um, just get that feeling. So now that it's geometric, now that we know it's geometric, we can follow this little formula here, which is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. This is s sub what? r5 is the sum of the first five terms. That's equal to a sub 1. What's a sub 1? Three. 3. We put 1 in there, we get 4 to the 0. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 minus r is 4, four to the n, right? n is 5 over minus 4, 3 times 1 minus n over 4 to the 5th is off the top of my head. Uh, work on this. Negative 1 times negative 24, 10 to 24, that makes sense. Negative 1 times negative 10 to 23, 10 to 23. over and over and over, just keeps getting easier and easier and easier. Yeah. yeah, it just takes a while. Yeah. It's definitely, no, it definitely is easier. I'm getting around to taking a while. All right, so today we're going to ask what happens uh, when we don't add up just five terms, but we add up an infinite number of terms. What's that? Okay, so let's start there. If we were to take, and we're gonna talk about specifically one kind of series, the geometric series, okay? So, I'm gonna get out your pencils and papers. geometric sequence series, so they're going to be adding them up. Um, so Tristan, I asked, what happens if you don't add up just the first five, the first seven, or the first thousand, but an infinite, like if we said infinity, we put infinity instead of five. What did you say? It grows. It grows. So it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Is that what you're saying? Yep. That's your, your idea? It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not going to get close to like 70 million. Right? And then just get closer and closer and closer to 70 million. Right? I don't see that happening. It just doesn't make sense, does it? Okay? So to kind of uh, view this happening, in case uh, you know what Tristan's saying is not making any sense. Let's just take this onto another page and talk about partial sums. We want to write that down. Partial sums. Okay. To 
get an idea of what's going to happen uh, if we if we keep adding up more and more and more numbers up to infinity numbers. We look at the partial sums. Now the partial sum, like we just did a partial sum. We did the fifth partial sum in the, on the page just before this. So this is the fifth partial sum. Kind of makes sense. The partial sum. The part of the infinite sum. Right? So it's the fifth partial sum. The fifth partial sum we just found was we have we actually yeah we did add it together. We got Do the tenth partial sum. See what's happening to these sums as we let n be bigger and bigger. Okay, well that's going to be a sub 1 times 1 minus 4 to the tenth over 1 minus 4. So that's going to be, this is negative 3, negative 1, negative 1 times 1 minus 4 to the tenth. 48,576. So we got uh, negative one times negative one million, one million forty-eight thousand five seventy-five. So positive one million forty-eight thousand five seventy-five. Okay. Well, that just got huge, right? And if we went to the twentieth partial sum, bigger you think, and the fiftieth, the hundredth, the thousandth partial sum. Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. So there doesn't seem like anything interesting is happening <coughs> with partial sums of this geometric series. Let's look at a different geometric series. This geometric series. I'll just write down the terms. One plus a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus a second. Just keep going, going, and going. So I, I'm writing the sum of all these, and then I put dot, 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 meaning forever. Add up an infinite number of these, which seems like if you add up an infinite number of numbers, it's going to get, this is what's going to happen? It's going to keep going and going and going. And going. Right. So let's see what happens. Let's look at the partial sums for this series. Okay? So. We can use the, the formula because this is a geometric sequence, right? Geometric series. Okay. With a sub one is what? And a and uh, r. What is r? One, one half. We multiply by one half. So let's look at the fifth partial sum here too. Right. So that equals a sub one times one minus r to the n over one minus. R, 1 times uh, 1 minus 1 over 32, 1 minus 1 half, that's 1 times, um, see this would be, we can get common denominators, right? 32 over 32, minus 1 over 32, 31 over 32, and then 2 halves minus 1 half, So that equal we'll multiply by the reciprocal there, 31 over 32 times 2 over 1 equals 16, 31 over 16. Okay, 31 over 16. Is that close to any value? Maybe? Is it really close to something? Close to 2. 32 over 16 would be, third, would be 2, right? So let's see, like we don't we want to make sure it's not getting bigger and bigger and bigger like yeah. the last one was, right? Oh. So let's look at S sub 20. Let's go really far. The 20th partial sum. You guys do that. Do the 20th partial sum. I don't know what you come up with. And it'd be great if you could do you know, the fraction. Step in here to the 20th power. Uh, raise that to the 20th power, you get 1 over 1,048,576, which sounds. Oh, 
four to ten. Which makes sense because four is two squared, so two yeah. squared is ten to the two to the twentieth. Uh, you time the denominator, well, this is just gonna be this many, this is one million forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy six, one million forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy six minus one of them. That thing over two, you're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. What do you think this is close to? This guy right here, believe it or not, is equal to two. Not close to two. Not one little tiny 525,288 away from being two. But if we add it up, and here's the key part, an infinite number of terms which you could ever actually do, right? Like physically you can't add up an infinite number of things. Why? Once you get to the this one, you add to the next one, and then after you're done with that, you add the next one, mm -hmm. right? So it's not anything you could physically do. You can't physically add up all of these terms. You don't have enough time in all of the lives of all of the people who have ever lived and ever will live to actually add up all these terms. If you could, you would get two. Um, I can prove it to you, but in the end, I would be right if it would still be equal to. Right. Um, well, what do you think is like the difference between this series and this series that causes this one to just get bigger and bigger and bigger, and this one to be two? Series, yeah, right, series. Yeah, series. Yeah, are less than one. All the fractions are less than one? They're closer and close to one. So in the rule with the um, thing you're multiplying by, would it get close to the reciprocal? Or is that just so the thing you're multiplying by is uh, well just this number right here, right? One half. Like the rule for this would be we already wrote it down. One times one half to the n minus one power. That's the rule for this one, the formula for this one. If it's less than one. If what's less than one? If the ratio is less than one. The ratio? The ratio, R. The ratio, okay. If R is less than one, then yeah. It will, the, the numbers that you add will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? Um, and to oversimplify it, 
we can say, well, because those numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, the, the amount that you're adding on is so much, so tiny, we can kind of think of it as like getting down and going to what? Like or going, going down to like nothing. Like the thing that you're adding on towards infinity is so small that the whole thing just gets close to some singular value, right? It all converges, converges to a single value. That's not always true, but in a geometric sequence it is true. We have a geometric series, and we're trying to add up all those terms. We have a geometric series. Um, yes, if your numbers keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, then you will converge to a single value. Okay. Um, so if r is less than 1, okay, then the sum It's close to some number, two, or for a different geometric series with a different a sub one and a different r, it might get close to seven and three fourths. Right? It depends on what r is and what the beginning value is. For instance, real quick, if if we were to instead of starting at one, we start at one half. One's not the first term, but one half instead is the first term, then what would that add up to? One. One, right? Because you add one more and you get two. So all that other stuff adds up to one. What's all of that stuff add up to if you take off one and one half? One half. All that stuff forever and ever and ever for all infinity adds up to a half plus a half plus a one. Um, now the kind of interesting thing is, let's think about uh, one plus negative one half plus one fourth minus one eighth plus one sixteenth minus one thirty second. What do you think? Will this converge to some single value? You start at one, you take away half, you add a fourth, you take away an eighth, you add a sixteenth, you take away a thirty second. Do you think that's going to converge to something? sense that it would. We can look at the partial sums, right? Let's look at those partial sums. Let's look at, uh, well, let's take a big partial sum like S sub, uh, let's go to 20. 20 certainly gives us a, a picture of what we should wind up with. Let's say sub 1 times 1, 1 minus R, what's R? If I multiply this by negative half, I get negative half. Times negative one fourth, negative times negative is positive one fourth, times negative one half, times negative one half, times negative one half. So it's negative one half to the 20th over one minus negative one half. It's one times negative one half to the 20th is going to be the same as positive one half to the 20th. Even power, so I'm going to have 1 minus 1 over 1,048,526. Did I write that enough times? That's 76. Over, what's 1 plus a half? More than 1 half. 1 half, 3 halves. Equals <coughs> 1 times. Five over six three halves multiply by two thirds. Multiply by two thirds. 
349,525 over 524,288. Divide those two numbers on the Almost what? Almost a one. Almost a one. One point what? Or point nine. Point six 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 six. Is that close to one? No. Point six repeating. That's uh, two thirds. It's getting closer and closer to two thirds. Which makes sense. I mean, this thing is itself really, really close to being one, right? And we're multiplying something that's almost one by two thirds, so we get something that's really, really close to two thirds. So if we take this forever and ever and ever and we add it up, we're going to get two thirds. If we add it up for all eternity, that's what it takes to get to two thirds. So does a negative repeat that? It'll get close to the reciprocal on dividing by the first. That's what I was wondering with the other thing. No, I mean this is this right here. Look, look at this thing. What's this number, big or small? Small. Very, very small, right? We're taking that very small thing away from one. Close. So this part is close to one. Right? Yeah. The bigger this gets, the smaller this will be. Fit this whole thing. The closer this will be to one, yeah. And so this will get the, the numerator will get closer to one. This will get close to depends what R is. No, he was wondering. Like, oh, okay. Well, the final result get closer like to the two thirds. Uh huh. So the reciprocal of the three. Added. Oh, okay. Well, that depends also. That that only happened because we have a one out here. Okay. If we had a two, we have two times whatever the reciprocal of that is. So do we have to do the big division thing on top if it's ten or something? If that's a good question, right? Yeah. That's what we're trying to get to. Is like. You know what? I think this is, is what you're saying, right? Reese, that do we really have to do this? Yeah. What do you think? Probably not. Right? I, mean, I think we can just say that if this goes to infinity, and this number is, well, between 1 and negative 1, right? Because this was negative yeah. 1. So another way to say that would be that the absolute <coughs> value, what's the absolute value mean? Yeah, how far away from zero it is, which we always take to be this positive number. Yeah. Yeah. So, the bigger this gets, the smaller this will be, the closer and closer and closer this whole thing right here will be to what? Being what? One. One, right? We're either going to, depending on if this is negative or positive, we're going to take away or add on just the tiniest amount to one. So that in terms of uh, infinity, we can just call it one. Okay. So if this is our formula for uh, a partial sum, with the special condition that the absolute value of r is less than zero, so meaning a number between, between negative one and one. Uh, when we take that number to a huge, huge, huge exponent, then this thing will be what? What kind of a number? Really small. Really small. We take this number that's less than 1, between negative 1 and 1, to a really big power, we're just going to have a, a smaller number over a relatively huge number, and this is going to be a very small number that you are barely going to change 1 by adding or subtracting this to it. So, for this, uh, and n going to infinity, we have s sub, I guess you could call it s sub infinity if you wanted to, or s sub n, saying that n goes to infinity, is just a sub 1 times 1 over 1 minus r. I'm going to erase that infinity because it's. Yeah, it happens.
happens and is huge. And is infinity. It actually goes off to infinity, which is not anything you can get to, right? It's not a number, it's a concept that means we go on forever. So yeah, it has some spe special conditions. Geometric, first, first thing, for a geometric series, the absolute value of r has to be less than zero. Okay. And of course, n has to go to infinity for this to be the formula. If it doesn't go to infinity, then it's just this. You just plug in whatever n is. Right? n is a thousand, n is a million. But if it's infinity, then that's, that's our guy. One over one minus r. Let's, find, let's uh, just stay on the same page and I'll give you a geometric series that I want you to find the infinite sum for. Not the partial sum, but the infinite sum. Um, five, and you get Oh, I'm one sorry. And yeah, I wrote it down. I wrote it down correctly there and incorrectly here. So good, good. One. for geometric series where r is less than 1. The thing you got to be careful of here is if you get too trigger happy and you just keep using this formula, if you use it for an r that's bigger than 1, you wouldn't even really notice. You're still going to come out with some number. Okay? It's not like it's going to explode and, and something weird is going to happen. you got to remember that this is only for an infinite series where r is between 1 and negative 1. The absolute value of r is less than so you gotta confirm that that's the case. Is r less than one? Yes. Yeah. What is r? Three fifths. Three fifths times three fifths. Yeah. Three fifths. Yeah. Okay. So a sub one is five uh, times one over one minus r, which is three fifths. Oops. Five times one over uh, two fifths equals. This will add up to twelve and a half. Okay. So here's a cool thing we can do with the adding up of an infinite geometric series. And that is we can take an infinite repeating decimal and figure out what the fraction is. Any decimal that repeats. Starts repeating at some point can be uh, converted to a fraction using some of the geometric series. Let's just start out with one that we know, okay? Like, or probably know, 0.3333. Is that one third? It is one. It'll be one third, and let's just confirm that it's one third with the sum of the infinite geometric series. So first we have to write it as the sum of an infinite number of terms in a geometric series. Okay. So the first thing to do is look at, um, let's see, how shall we write this? So let's write it like this. Uh, point 
3. And we'll take that. And that'll be the first term. And then a sub 2, we're going to add to point 3, we'll add point zero 3. And then a sub 3, we're going to add point zero zero 3. You start to get the idea? If I keep just adding another 0 and then put the 3 at the end, then when I add up the infinite number of terms, a sub 1 through a sub infinity, I will get 0 0.3 through 3. Okay? So now, let's write it so we can more clearly see it as a geometric series so that we can see what term we start on, what we're multiplying by to get the next term. Okay? How do we write this as a fraction? 3 tenths. 3 tenths. And this is? 3 hundredths. 3 hundredths and 3 thousandths. thousandths. Here's the tricky one. Zero, 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 three. Is three ten thousandths. Ten thousandths. Okay. So you can see here's the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. All we need to figure out is what's a sub one? Easy. What's r? One tenth. One tenth. We multiply by one tenth, <coughs> by one tenth, by one tenth. The denominator just keeps going up by a factor of ten. So a sub one clearly is three tenths, and r is one tenth. Or, sorry, s sub n equals uh, 3 tenths, that's a sub 1, times 1 over 1 minus r. 3 tenths times 1 over 9 tenths. That's 3 tenths times 10 ninths equals, this is those cancel out. Got ones up here. You got one. Kind of cool, huh? Here's one you'll like. For you to figure out the fraction form. Point nine nine nine. You need some help figuring out how to. Write it the way that I was writing it before. Nine point zero three. Nine forever is a one. Close to one? Almost one? One. That seems strange to you. Open. But yeah, um, we are. It might be very, very troubling. I have students who, from years ago, still can't accept. You can't accept that 1 plus a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth and so on is 2. You can't accept that 0.9 forever is 1. But it is. And this is equal to 1. No, how? How? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess the same way that 0.3 forever is 1 third. Right? Not a bunch of threes, an infinite number. Like the, the, the problem that we have with one third is you're trying to take one and divide it by three in a base ten system, and ten's not divisible by three. So it doesn't come out nicely. Right? Not like one fourth is 0.25. That's the decimal representation of one fourth, 0.25. Right? But the one is, you know, ten's not divisible by three, one, one's not divisible by three. Uh, it's not even, like we just get this repeating cycle of threes. And if we kept trying to do like long division of one divided by three, we would just keep getting three after three after three after three after three forever and ever and ever and ever stop. So one divided by three is point three. Right? Um, how to show you that point nine forever is one is doable. Like I can prove it to you over and over and over. But just to sit back and say, like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense, point nine to nine forever. This feels like one. It doesn't feel like one. It feels like close to one. And I'm not even saying that point nine forever is so close to one that we call it one. I'm saying it is one. Just like I'm saying point three forever is three. Or one third is not three. One third. Okay? Here's one more quick one. Just proving the same thing. Point three, three, three forever is one third. Right? 
0.3333 forever is one third. 0.3333 forever. One third. What do I get when I add a third plus a third plus a third? One. What do I get when I add 0.3 forever plus 0.3 forever plus 0.3 forever? I get all these nines. It is true. It's not a trick. It is true that 0.9 forever is one. Okay, on to the next thing. So there's the sum of infinite geometric series. Go on forever. We can use that formula. A sub 1 times 1 over 1 minus r as long as what? As long as uh, geometry. R, r is less than 1. Less than 1. Or, or Absolute one. value of r. Yeah. The actual value of r is between negative 1 and 1. And n and If it goes to 10, it certainly is not going to work out. So, now some sequences, now this is 12.5, some sequences, it, it's either, let's Wait, say, we just learned 12.5 or yeah, we just learned 12.4. Okay. And now we're on to 12.5. Okay. So, sometimes a sequence is, it, it's nearly impossible, if not impossible, let's say very difficult, to write a formula for the sequence, okay? So we do what comes naturally to you and we find it recursively, okay? So let me give you a sequence and you see if you can figure out what the recursive, like what you do to get the next number. You add the two numbers before it. Add the two numbers before it. Is this the Fibonacci sequence? Yes, Fibonacci. Okay, here's a sub one. Here's a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, a sub 7. Now, for let's let's just take arithmetic and geometric sequences. I can express them recursively or explicitly. Recursively just is like whenever you're tempted to just tell me what the pattern is, go add 5, multiply by 7. Right? That's recursive definition. Just do this to this number and you'll get the next number. Or do this to these previous two numbers and you'll get the next number. That's recursive. All right? So this is easy enough. You add the, the two numbers before. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 plus 5 is 8. And so on. It goes on forever and ever. And it has some really, really neat properties. Uh, but um, that's not what we're concerned with. But we're concerned more with recursive definition. If I were to try and write a formula for this, there actually is one. But it's crazy. Okay, it's crazy. And I would never expect anybody to just come up with it. So what we do with sequences like this where the formula is, well, well, not just because the formula may be hard to figure out, but because they tell you to define it recursively. We talk about it recursively, meaning in terms of time, in term, uh, the numbers before. Okay. So if I want a sub 3, what do I add up? Equals a sub 2. If I want a sub 5, what do I do? I want a sub n, okay, so now this isn't so much a formula, it's defined by the terms before it, so we have to express that somehow. What a sub n I add up? a sub n times 2 plus a sub n times 1. Exactly. This is a sub 5. a sub 4 is just 1 minus 5. a sub 3 is 5 minus 2. Not 1 minus 5. 5 minus 1. 5 minus 2. 3 minus 1. 3 minus 2 n minus 1, n minus 2. There's an example of us having defined a sequence recursively. Let me give you a recursive definition so you can generate the terms for that recursive definition. a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus And uh, can you get started? Can you start with Yeah, we gotta start somewhere. If, if, if it's recursive, if it's defined uh, by the terms before, you have to have the terms before. So then I have to tell you that a sub 1 is equal to 12. So what's the next term that you can find? a sub.
We got it to the first five terms. sequence looks like when you define it recursively. Okay, so that's recursive. And this this is explicit. Okay. Explicit because it's, it's I can just run out and find a set of 20,000 if I want to just go right to it. But a recursive definition. Okay, so a sub 1 is 5. So if we want to find a, so let's just like follow this little formula, this recursive definition. a sub 2 is equal to a sub 2 minus 1 squared plus 1. What's 2 minus 1? 1. one. So we have a sub 1 squared plus 1. We know what a sub 1 is. It's 5. 5 squared plus 1. 26. Okay, so now we move on to a sub 3. Well, following this pattern, an a sub 3 is going to be a sub 2 squared plus 1. All together? 677. Square 26, we get 676, I guess, and add 1, we get 677. And then what? We square that number. Okay, that's a sub 4, a sub 5 is like 2 big, yeah. what's it say? Yeah. 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 2.1 yeah. 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 Do you know what it means when it says E11? Yeah. What does it mean? Move the, move the decimal place, it's a positive 11, so two, move it to the right 11 places. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to borrow this real quick. Sure. So, two, one, two, three. 
calculator doesn't give you any more numbers after that. Let's give it zeros. There's the first five of that. There's the sequence. It's really big, really fast. generate the terms of a recursively defined Call our, our number a sub n, c, or if you call it f of x. We can uh, we can generate a recursively defined sequence like this. If we take f of x to be negative three x. And whatever we get, we just put it back into the function. And then whatever we get out of that, we put it back into the function again. Whatever we get out of that, we put it back into the function again. We get a recursively defined sequence. So if we say that x sub 0, which is kind of another way of saying x sub 1, it's just the first. Your ground 0, patient 0, right 0, a lot of times means where it all starts. If that's uh, 2. Then x sub 1 will be when we put x sub 0 into the function. So x sub 1 equals f of x sub 0 equals negative 3 times 2 plus 1 equals negative 5. And x sub 2 is f of x sub 1. We just take this guy and put it back into the function again. Negative 3 times negative 5 plus 1. We get 15 plus 1, 16. x sub 3 equals f of x sub 2 equals negative 3 times 16 plus 1. And it just goes like that. And, and each time we do this, we call it an iteration. Okay? You heard the word iteration before? Anybody watch Lost? Mm -hmm. You watch Lost? Mm -hmm. they're, on, they're on the island uh, like the first few days, and then you find that recording that we saw the yeah. and it says iteration, whatever. It's kind of a fun scene. Uh, they decide you this little map. Um, so this is called the first iteration, second iteration. When we iterate, it means that we've done it again. We do it again, we do it again, we do it again. We've got a few minutes, the bells are a little...